Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. Making this on the 27th of February for a release on the 28th, a Thursday. And with us in studio today, Russ Dizdar, author of this book, The Black Awakening. Russ, welcome to Prophecy in the News. Good Thank to talk you. to you. Great to be here with you. Thank you. You know, on the back of your book, there's a, a little paragraph. It says, in this twilight of human history, darkness burns its black flame. Soon the chaos will erupt and fear will fly. The black awakening will occur. For those who have served this long, cold agenda, it has too. For them, time is running out. Human blood and satanic rituals have summoned dark powers. Now that's a very, you've got a black cover, the black awakening. Yeah. It's a dark subject. Yeah. And as we enter into this subject, mm -hmm. I, I, for, I for one feel the, the need to just be really serious about it because sure. it's no laughing matter. Right. Your ministry has taken you into some very dark places and, and the Lord has gifted you to minister to people who are overtaken by the dark world of Satanism. Sure. And how did that happen? Well, in, um, I came out of uh, occultism and I was then a practicing Buddhist for a while before I even heard the gospel clearly. When I got saved and, and realized, wow, those other powers were real, but they weren't from God. Yeah. And when Christ came in and the Spirit of God came in my life, then I launched out to do evangelism and ministry. So we began to run into young students, uh, into Satanism, dabbling and things like that. But we found more and more and more. So we formed a team that would target any young people into Satanism, any of the subjects of Satanism, and go after that evangelistically. That, uh, over 30-some years, has taken us into hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases, m just hundreds of demonized cases, massive research deep into the underground, and um, it's, uh, it can be scary. It's really bad, and, but we don't want to close our eyes to it because it affects our neighborhoods and our schools and even the government. Now, how common is this practice today? I, I'm tempted to say Satanism, but it, right. and maybe that's the, the umbrella term right. that you would use, but there are, under the term Satanism, there are a lot of different practices and, right. and approaches out there. Uh, how common is this today? Well, the numbers are off the charts. When we talk about popular Satanism, traditional Satanism, psycho-Satanism, uh, sa uh, Satanic dabblers, then there's the real, Gary, the real Luciferian, the generational, that goes way back. That's what's involved in the Satanic ritual abuse phenomena that we've heard from since the 80s and 90s and the last mm -hmm. you know, decade or so. But the, here's what we haven't heard, the numbers. The numbers are now into the millions. Mm. United States, Canada, Australia, England, all of Europe. Uh, this phenomena goes back to blood rituals, their belief that a coming antichrist or super world leader is coming, uh, their belief that their rituals will help bring this mm. about, mm -hmm. their desire to see anarchy and chaos and the collapse of nations so that a new world order can come. Well, now that's interesting because when I as a Christian and I know other Christians, we are looking at Bible prophecy, we're seeing the rise of the Antichrist, which is a very negative thing for us, mm -hmm. but you're saying for them, it's something to be desired. It's a positive thing. Sure. I mean, to engage them over the years now and, to, and sit there to talk with them and engage them and, and uh, to listen to them, even as we've tried to evangelize and work with them in, in, in the underground, I mean, to, um, the ones that are really, uh, we're talking again, transgenerational, the ones that know the oldest rituals, they're highly connected worldwide. This goes anywhere from Bohemian Grove out there in California to Vadelsberg Castle in Germany. But now by the millions of them that have been involved, the rituals are ancient. And yes, they, they know that a super leader is coming. Whether we want to agree with them or not, they say they are going to help by the rituals, by the uh, unleashing of more demonic presence. They're going to help bring in the Antichrist. They're going to help bring in the chaos mm. that allows him to come into power. Now let's suppose, uh, and I've been a church pastor for some time, mm. let's suppose uh, there's a, an evangelical church out there. <clears throat> Somebody comes in, maybe a teenager, maybe someone in their 20s or 30s, 
maybe two or three. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're visiting church. And maybe they're wearing uh, some funny jewelry, lip piercings, some odd uh, tattoos or whatever. Sure. But they're still, they're coming to church. Right. They're curious. Right. And as you get to know them, you say, well, there's something really disturbed about this young person. Mm -hmm. Now, I speak from experience here. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you prepare yourself to mm -hmm. meet people who, right. let's say, are on the edges of the world you're talking about, but right. they're trying to get out? How do, how do you approach those, those young people? Well, I, I begin by the gospel, the idea, God so loved the world. So we're called to go to everybody anyway. We're called to go to the highways and the byways. And so that's an important issue for us. The fact, though, in the last 40-some years, since the 60s on, this massive cultural split occurred in the United States. One occult historian says that uh, the second largest proliferation of occult literature occurred in the 1960s in the United States. Wow. The first, pre-Nazi Germany. There's similarities. Mm -hmm. So now we have this vast, vast young people audience from the 60s up, now their children and now the grandchildren, raised away from the body of Christ, know nothing about the body of Christ, like I was out of the 60s. Um, so the, the thing is to jump into all the alternatives, and there's more alternatives now. The New Age movement, the alien issue, the uh, 2012 issue that just occurred, uh, Wicca, Druidism, Santeria, uh, searching for powers, but the problem is this. The dark side, as prophesied in Scripture, um, is, is growing exponentially and is in search. I mean, 1 Timothy 4.1. They're in search for people to bring deception. The broadest deception in history, I believe, is upon us now, and that's resulted in all the lives. Um, and our preparation, knowing the Lord Jesus, being, knowing the authority of God, knowing the armor of God, and, and being involved in ministering to people. Hmm. Well, I can tell that you've got a ministry that's, that can go nowhere but, but up uh, from this point, point on, because... Uh, I think we're exponentially uh, experiencing some very dark things in our society. I mean, yeah. you don't have to have much uh, observational skill sure. to see that society is collapsing very quickly, and, right. and that would include right at the pinnacle of, of the collapse would be Satanism of, in various forms. Right. People are looking for power today, aren't they? I mean, they want Absolutely. power of some kind. Now, we know of power of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is not at all like satanic power, and yet it is the greatest power on earth, sure. and we need to tell people about that. Absolutely. I mean, here you have, why should we be ashamed or afraid or embarrassed? God loves us. Nobody loves us more. God wants us. Nobody wants us more. And the provision of Christ at the cross is, this is the most powerful act in human history. The cross is where Jesus came to destroy Satan's work, deal with sin, deal with death, deal with hell itself, um, to bring liberation to us, to come into our lives so that we can know God and then have a future and also have protection because these days, as again prophesied, and Jesus said, you know, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. We're, we're birthed, in a sense, church-wise and even as a believer into a spiritual battle, but it's broader than ever before right now. Now, this book, The Black Awakening, that you've written is sort of a I think it's partly biographical. It tells about your work. Right. It tells about your experience. It also speaks of, uh, of, what, of the subjects you're talking about sure. right now in more depth and detail than you have time for. Sure. Well, even the term black awakening, I explain in the first part of the book, that's not, most people don't know the word, what it means, but it came from the underground, what we call the undergrounders, uh, those deep level Satanists. They refer to that as the day of the great chaos. They believe a great chaos before a new order is going to come, just like the, you know, the Masons have, just like the old occultists have. So, but they believe they're going to help create it. Um, so they call it a black awakening and the rise of like a master race. They look at themselves as like super soldiers and that they're going to be the enforcers. Um, and our engagement, the numbers are off the charts hmm. and we need to be aware. It's a very interesting subject, a little bit dark, but it, that, let's face it, <clears throat> there are things happening that maybe you need to know about. Uh, on our, in our online bookstore, <clears throat> we'll show you how you can get a copy of The Black Awakening, should you desire one. And of course, you're watching us 
uh, on our internet right now, and so you'll you'll have right before your very eyes uh, the way to get uh, Russ Dizdar's book, The Black Awakening. What are you going to be doing from here on in? Where do you think the Lord is taking you? <clears throat> sure, we're going to um, do a sequel to this series. We're writing one on the Antichrist right now called The Rise of Homo Satanus. We have another smaller book called Once Blind about salvation, how you know, I came out of occultism and Buddhism and so forth and got saved, how I came to know Christ. Uh, so we're going to be pressing the metal in evangelism, uh, praying for revival like we've talked about before. But um, we need to bring great exposure, deep exposure to what the dark side is doing, commanded uh, by the scripture, uh, expose evil deeds of darkness. And that's, that's more of what we're going to be doing. Russ, thanks for being with us today Thank on you, Prophecy Travis. in the News. Appreciate and may the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. I'm Gary Stearman, and remember, keep looking up, everybody.